You're watching QC Attorney. Introducing Miss Angela Averilia. Hello everyone and magandang buhay. Welcome to QC and Attorney. Sabi nga nila iba ang may alam. So this video will give you various information regarding law-related terms, cases, and trivias. We will be accompanied by an amazing lawyer to help us ponder on the things we want to learn and need to know. So sit back, relax, because with cues and attorneys, you will learn more. Without further ado, let's begin and learn. As we all know, social media became an avenue to connect, communicate, learn, and a whole lot of things. But there's always a cons in every side. You're just having coffee while scrolling online when suddenly you saw floods of comments and posts talking negatively about you. It doesn't end there. Someone messaged you directly. She bowed mouthed you and the rest of your family. She exposed you online, claiming that you are the mistress of her husband, when in fact, her husband was only your distant relative that she don't know. You immediately took screenshots of what she posted, and after some time, she took down the post and deleted your conversation. But the damage has been done, and your reputation has been trampled by malicious comments and hate. With all delayed information, this is considered a violation against cyber libel or defined in Article 355 of the Revised Penal Code as amended to be the drug computer system or any other similar means which may be devised in the future. The requisites for libel also covers a new medium which is the online platform. And here are the requisites. One, it must be defamatory. Two, it must be malicious. Three, it must be given publicly. And last, it, the victim must be identifiable. The act must be committed through a computer system or any other similar means which may, de which may be devised in the future according to our Republic Act 1017, as defined a while ago, where in the given example, the requisites are meant which gives the victim the right to file a case against a perpetrator, the latter cause action that may put the reputation of the persons involved in some serious consequences. Thank you, Attorney Balcueva, for that very informative and interesting discussion regarding cyber libel. This is just getting more interesting, right? I guess it's just the perfect time to move on to the second case example. But before that, you might need some trivia. In the Philippines, you will not be held liable if you kill your husband or wife while he, she is having a sexual intercourse with another person. According to Article 247 of the Revised Penal Code, it states that any legally married person who having surprised his spouse in the act of committing sexual intercourse with another person shall kill any of them or both of them in the act or immediately thereafter or shall inflict upon them any serious physical injury shall suffer the penalty of this terror. If he shall inflict upon them physical injuries of any other kind, he shall be exempt from punishment. Trivia number two. The perpetrator of rape will not be held liable if the victim agreed to marry him or her wherein in the Article 266C of the Anti-Rape Law of 1997, the effect of pardon, the subsequent valid marriage between the offended party shall extinguish the criminal action or the penalty imposed. In case it is the legal husband who is the offender, the subsequent forgiveness by the wife as the offended party shall extinguish the criminal action or the penalty provided that the crime shall not be extinguished 
or the penalty shall not be abated if the marriage is void ab initio. The law has long divided crimes into mala in se, or evil in itself, a crime or an act that is inherently immoral, such as murder, arson, or rape. Mala prohibita, prohibited evil, is an act that is a crime merely because it is prohibited by statute, although the act itself is not necessarily immoral. Violations of the revised penal code are referred to as malum ense, which literally means that the act is inherently evil or bad or per se wrongful. On the other hand, violations of special laws are generally referred to as malum prohibitum. A common misconception is that all mala ense crimes are found in the Revised Penal Code or RPC, while all mala prohibited crimes are provided by special penal laws. In reality, however, there may be mala ense crimes under special laws such as plunder under Republic Act or RA number 7080 as amended. Similarly, there may be mala prohibita crimes defined in the RPC such as technical malversation. Sweetheart Defense Have you heard of sweetheart defense in criminal law? Sweetheart defense is a defense interposed by a person accused of rape. The accused, in using this as a defense, admits that he had carnal knowledge of the victim. The admission does not necessarily mean he is guilty of the crime. This defense is also known as confession and avoidance. While he admits the act, the accused at the same time states that he is not liable, saying that the copulation is consensual. Hence, he professes innocence of the charge. For this defense to exist, the sweetheart defense must be proven by compelling evidence. First, that the accused and the victim were lovers. And second, that she consented to the alleged sexual relations. The second is as important as the first because the court has held often enough that love is not a license for lust. The mere fact that the accused and the victim or lovers should not exculpate him for criminal liability for rape. An allegation of a love relationship between the parties, even if found to be true, does not eliminate the use of force to consummate the crime because the gravamen of rape is the carnal knowledge of a woman against her will without her consent. So a mere allegation of the accused that he had romantic alliance with the victim is not enough to constitute the defense. It is required that he must adduce documentary or object evidence like love letters, photographs, mementos, or any other proof of romantic nature. The fact alone that two people were seen seated beside each other conversing during a jeepney ride without more cannot give rise to the interference that they were sweethearts. Intimacies such as loving caresses, cuddling, tender smiles, sweet murmurs, or any other affectionate gestures that one bestows upon his or her lover would have been seen and are expected to indicate the presence of the relationship. There can be no sweetheart defense when accused and victim just met one day before rape. It is inconceivable that in barely one day of having known each other, accused and victim were already in a relationship. A Legal Maxims El queses causa de la causa es causa del mal causado. The cause of the cause is the cause of the evil cost. Volenti non fit injuria. Consent removes mistake. 
Nulum crimen, nula puena sine lege. There is no crime and there is no law punishing it. Example, you had a night out with some of your friends and came home drunk. Earlier that day, you told your boardmate that you may not be able to come home. But then you changed your mind. You went home and inside you kept on bumping things because of dizziness. And out of nowhere, someone hit you in the head that caused you to lose your consciousness. You woke up in the hospital with some severe wounds in the head. Then you found out that the one responsible for what happened is your boardmate. Apparently, there are a series of break-ins in the area, and since it was dark, he didn't recognize you. That's why he hit you in the head with a baseball bat. The moment you fell, he immediately opened the light and was shocked to find out it was actually you. The question here is, is the board mate liable for what happened? What happened here is what you call mistake of fact or ignorantia facta excusat. It is not criminally liable as he or she has no intention of causing the other person any harm or injury. What if that person is really a the intruder? Actions would be justified as he was only acting out of self-preservation, wherein he is without fault or negligence as his or her deliberate intent to defend himself with a baseball can be determined by the fact that he cried out of It is the best for the two of you to talk. The dependent can compensate you for the physical injury, but it will always fall as to how the both of you will settle things. Thank you so much, Attorney Balcueva, and to everyone who joined us today. Thank you and see you next episode. I am Angela, your host. Have a great night.